I think some of the emotion took us a bit by surprise. It's funny when you enter a final season of the thing and you know that it's the final season of the thing, you feel like you're preparing yourself the whole time and you're not <laughs> because when you're actually in the moment where you're realizing it's the, it's the last time you're gonna be on a set that you've been on for the past four years or last time you're gonna have a scene with a character, you know, that you've been working with for so long. It's it's just, you can't really prepare yourself for that. It, it's super emotional. But it's cool that we got to know that we were kind of coming to the end so that we could be um, intentional about it, and deliberate about, you know, the choices we were making and like really taking it all in. You know, I remember mm -hmm. the last days that we were shooting at the studio. I usually have music playing in the dressing room and that song, Thanks for the Memories, came on by Sarah Vaughan. And I was a puddle of tears in the transpo van going home, like driving over the bridge. I was like, oh, I'll remember this bridge forever. And I'll remember this road and all of the potholes in it, like silly little things that um, that are very meaningful. I remember you were also playing that song in your dressing room and your door was shut and I knocked on the door and I asked if I could come in and I danced with you to the song like we did in the episode where we went back to Harrisburg and you and I were dancing. There are very few things in your life that you get to know that this is gonna be the last time. So often it's the last time and you just, you're not prepared. Hey MTV News, we are the cast of The Bold Type and we are going to be listing the top five boldest moments from the show. Well, my nomination for the, the first boldest moment from the show is obviously the Yoni Egg. Damn, you took I, mine. I, no, but it has to be. I mean, it's A, because it came like really early in the season and two, because I mean, I, I've never seen anybody else do something like that on television. It was like one best friend sticking her hands inside of her other best friend for a greater good. <laughs> and I just remember that was like one of the first scenes that we've like actually done any sort of um, like improvisation in a way. And like Megan, when she's like, all right, be with me here like we're on a beach there's a pack of puppies we're drunk and i was like that was just all improvised by megan and it's so true to like me katie that i was like she knows me and then it's just like pulling out things the director had her what did you even pull out it, it like was not in a yoni egg there was like a keychain rubber ducky yeah some other stuff <laughs> yeah they were trying to get me to laugh Look, I'm just gonna need you all to go with me here, okay? I think the next boldest moment is actually the moment in, I'm pretty sure it's episode two, when our genius uh, music supervisor, Rob Lowry, put a song by Lizzo in the, the second episode. And this was like, this predated like anyone knowing about Lizzo and like being on the Lizzo train. So I think that that's just a really cool moment. And there was a Black Pink song in that first episode. I think like one of the boldest things about the show is the way that the music slaps. I remember the, the Black Pink song was when um, Sutton is changing her underwear into the like black underwear that she told Richard she was wearing. <laughs> yeah. The next boldest moment, I will say when the girls all accidentally uh, macro dose on mushrooms and trip balls in the office. <laughs> that was actually something that Asia pitched like years ago, being like, we're gonna do mushrooms and then we're gonna hallucinate that like a musical episode happens. Yeah, I've been trying to get psychedelics on the show for a while. I think it was at the first uh, panel we ever did. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. And now we did it, and it's a really funny episode. I like laughed filming that probably in almost every scene. I like couldn't get through it, especially like looking at Megan <laughs> during it. <laughs> the next boldest moment from our show, I think, is the Sex Club episode. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That was very fun. We shot that in like the weirdest place ever. It like, yeah. it like had so many weird hidden rooms. I feel like the three of us at one point found like a secret staircase that led to the roof. Actually in the basement, it was an actual grotto, like a pool. It was like chlorine in the air, chlorine in my pores, just like 
Very intense. Um, yeah. So fun. Had the best time. Yeah. Very fun. I mean, I just think that like the very last scene that we have in the show is us in the fashion closet, just kind of like talking about where we're going to end up and where we're going to go. And like that will stick out in my brain as one of my favorite scenes that I've ever shot because it was the last scene in the fashion closet. And even though it wasn't our last scene together, it felt like a like chapter closing for real in that moment. And like, we all in our own takes were like so emotional that I don't really think we all did more than like one take of our own shots because we like couldn't get through it and it was just so real mm -hmm. and raw. We know where they're kind of going in the future given this. I will say that I hope that wherever they end up, they are still together and still supporting each other and encouraging each other and following their dreams and asserting themselves. I hope Kat learns how to schedule tweets. <laughs> <laughs> I only wish for her. <laughs> Sutton is living in Pennsylvania. She owns a breakfast and coffee place and she's got a horse, some chickens. Or it's just Megan's future. Yeah. <laughs> I would really love to like, think that the girls decide to like take some sort of like vacation together and like go somewhere exotic. Mm -hmm. I, also, I also just want that for us. No, let's do that. <laughs> we end the show in a way where it lets fans kind of imagine where they go next. And I feel like these characters are gonna continue to live on for people because I feel like more and more people are gonna discover the show. So. Endings aren't always a sad thing. What's beautiful about the show is that it's, and we've all experienced like the effects of this firsthand is how much it has given young people and I mean, people of all ages and walks of life and genders and sexual orientations and whoever it is that watches the show, I feel like it's been really empowering for people and it's people to live their truest lives and um, to have the confidence to ask for the raise or to tell someone that they love them. So I think the show ending, I hope that people take it as just like motivation to go out and like live now, like take the lessons from the show and like go and live your most like beautiful, brave, awesome life.